Hello everybody. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you for joining me today. It's been a minute since I got a video up a little longer than I usually like. I try to put out two to three a week. It's been a couple of days. I had some things going on uh, with some maintenance around the RV and some personal appointments and things like that. Uh, that just haven't left a ton of spare energy to be making videos and things like that, which is a great segue into today's topic. So, um, me personally, before I was ever diagnosed with narcolepsy or dysautonomia or any of the other various things uh, that are going on, I always had this struggle to explain how uh, my struggles with energy related to the things that I did. I always felt like, um, imagine if a person was a car, I always felt like my gas tank was not only smaller than other people's, but that I was less fuel efficient, as it were, uh, that doing fewer things would burn up the same amount of fuel as other people, and I had less of it to begin with. Well, there's another widely used analogy that uh, you see in a lot of circles when it comes to chronic illness or invisible illnesses or anything that challenges a person to get through uh, normal abilities when or normal activities when they have additional challenges or disabilities or what have you and they may not function at the same level that you would expect from a fully healthy person. Now, this analogy is called the spoon theory and supposedly it started when the woman who created it was having lunch or a coffee or something with a friend at a cafe and was trying to explain to her friend how she struggled with managing her energy for activities uh, versus what people expected her to be capable of. And so the story goes, she went around the cafe and grabbed up spoons from the table and used these spoons as a metaphor for a unit of currency, as it were, or fuel that were expended to do activities. So I actually just happened to go grocery shopping and I have some spoons here. So you have to start this by understanding that everybody has a different energy level. They have a different activity level, a different ability level. So uh, how this works for every person in terms of uh, numbers and relative energy expended is very different. Uh, and especially when it comes to different forms of chronic illnesses, chronic fatigue, uh, it can even apply to brain injuries and I mean I don't want to get too specific but it's about anybody who has challenges with managing their energy. So imagine that I have some spoons right here and this is how many that I woke up with today. Two, four, six, eight. Okay so here's ten. So these spoons represent the currency that I have to use throughout the day. And I'm going to give some rough numbers, I have 10 here, and just explain what kinds of things in my life would use up spoons. And uh, hopefully this will give you an idea of how this works, because even if you're not somebody who has uh, an abnormal energy level or struggles with having to manage their energy to get through day to day, there's a very good chance you know- Auto shutdown initiated. especially as a friend or a loved one, to have a greater insight of how to work with them and what to expect from them. So let's say I wake up and I haven't slept well, and uh, so I'm still waking up um, groggy, maybe disoriented, fatigued, body feels heavy. If I have to get up immediately to go do something, I have an appointment, somebody's coming by, I have to go be somewhere, and I'm just not feeling it and I don't have time to take medicine or whatever and let it kick in and get me out of bed, that's a spoon right there. And so believe it or not, just that force to get up out of bed and use that energy uh, is actually already an energy expenditure if you happen to be waking up uh, in a day where your body's just saying, no, it's not happening today and you force it to do so anyways, then you're actually working above which, what your body's telling you the limitations are. So that's one right there. And I get up, I have to take 
medicine and you, usually I do that with breakfast and a coffee or something like that. For me, that actually is not a big deal because um, it helps give me energy and I know that I'm taking, you know, a vitamin and supplement blend and my medicine and everything. That's kind of like my start to the day. So that doesn't really use up energy for me, but for some people just getting up and getting together their medicine and everything like that uses up spoons. And especially if I have to cook or something like that, you can guarantee some of these are going away. Then you have to get up, get ready, and especially if you, you have to, of course we need to brush our teeth and do our hygiene, but uh, if you have to also do a trim or anything like that, and especially for me, taking a shower. Taking a shower is a huge energy sink for me, and it's gotten a lot better. I found out is because I, I do have a heart issue, my heart beats too fast, inappropriate sinus tachycardia, and the shower makes that go crazy. Before I was on medication, it would be like 170 beats per minute taking a shower. Now it's much more stable, but the process of taking a shower is still exhausting for me. It still makes my heart work above its baseline level, and it still takes away energy. So that right there, we'll go ahead and we'll say two spoons be safe. So before I start the day, I only have 70% of what I started with to get through the day. So now let's say it's a day where I have to go into town for a doctor's appointment. That means I have to drive and then I have to be mentally present at the doctor's appointment and then I have to come back and maybe do a small errand, whether it's pick up a little bit of groceries or get some gasoline in the car or something like that. That's gonna take three spoons right there. Believe it or not, driving uh, any more than 20 minutes is an exhausting activity for me. Often if I have to drive into town and back, that is the only thing that I get done that day. So now I get back, you know, I've had my appointment and it's probably late afternoon or something like that and then I'm going to clean up around the house. I've got trash needs to be taken out. I need to put things, you know, I have a bad habit of taking things out and not putting them back where they go. Maybe I have to uh, get my laundry into the machine, things like that. That's gonna take another spoon. And that leads us into the evening time. And now by evening, I've got three spoons left. And I can actually feel this. Uh, by about the evening time, if I've had a day that's uh, had some pretty good activity, it actually manifests as like a heaviness in my body. Um, I get this feeling that I have to sit down, and it's hard to explain. It's just like a weight, and if I don't sit down, then it just feels like I'm carrying a weight around with me. I also get kind of foggy, and it can be a little more difficult to think, to keep up with conversations, things like that. So as these start to get low, you actually feel the impact of it. Well now, let's say I want to do something like this. I love to keep up with my YouTube channel. Well, uh, some videos are scripted, some are not. And if I'm going to write a script, it's going to take at least one to two of these. So by the time I write the script, I've only got a single one of these left. And that's why sometimes I do a video like this where it is already, I already know what I want to say and uh, I'm already familiar with the topic and it's just me basically sitting down and having a conversation. That means I skip the whole scripting and research and everything else that saves me some of these. So I record the video and then I have to go and uh, we'll say recording a video like this takes one spoon because it's pretty easy. Then I have to go in, edit audio, put in background music. If it's anything that I do that has uh, stock footage or pictures or something like that, that can be exhausting. That can actually take two to three spoons. So these are my last two, and we'll say that I have a video that really needs a lot of editing and I need to get source material. I need to make sure I put all of my attributions in a document so that I can put the attributions in the video link. I have to download footage, and with the internet out here, it's awful. So, you know, I'm sitting here staring at a bar slowly taking away for a 15-second uh, stock film or whatever. 
So I use up my last two spoons, and the video is still not done. That means I have two choices. I can then cut my energy and go back to things that do not take up spoons for me. So in this hypothetical scenario, it's probably about 8 or 9 p.m., and that's where I'm about done for the day. If I uh, get to that point, I'll usually save whatever I'm working on and go do something mindless, watch TV or whatever, or read or listen to some music. And uh, by this point, I'm about out of energy for the day, so that's when I start prepping my nighttime medicine and things like that. That means that to finish that project, I now have to hope that there's another day that I can allocate spoons to it. Uh, so, it's been about five or six days, I think, since I uploaded anything, and I've had a lot of days where I had to drive into town. Uh, I've had to do a lot of maintenance work around here. Some of that's a little more labor-intensive than I've been used to. So, when it comes down to it, there's no fuel left in the tank, there's no spoons left, whatever the analogy is, the energy is gone, and it gets put off to another day. Like I said, these are just examples using my life and rough numbers. It's not like this is a math or anything. This is just a concept that I hope by explaining to people, then uh, whether you struggle with managing your energy, in which case this is a great thing for you to understand as a thought experiment so that you can learn to listen to your body and equate it to the energy you have left and start paying attention to high energy activities and things like that. Or if you're somebody who has somebody like that in your life, then you can understand things are not as simple as, well, just get up and do it. Um, and for people who have issues with energy management, that is very much not the case. So I'm sitting here, I'm out of spoons, right? I don't have any left to spend. What happens if something comes up that I still need to do? Uh, something comes up I can't avoid, it's something I gotta get figured out right now or whatever. Well, if I keep pushing and I'm out of spoons, what ends up happening is the next day I pay for it. And that can come in uh, a couple different ways. Uh, the first of all is it is so much harder to get out of bed the next day. Days when I push, pa push past my energy limit, that's when I end up sleeping 12 hours the next day and I wake up and I get out of bed and then I fall asleep after eating breakfast and I'm down for three more hours. So that's the first risk. The other is uh, we started with 10 of these just as an easy round number. Um, and again, these are all relative imaginary numbers. So whether it's 10 or a million, what really matters is the relativity of it. But uh, let's say I use all 10 of these and then I use two more that I don't have, so I'm in negative two, what ends up happening a lot of times is you end up paying that back with interest the next day. So if I use 12 today, I might wake up with only seven or eight tomorrow. Or things that are difficult end up using more. And what I mean by that is it may still only take me one spoon to do easy activities uh, that are low maintenance things, but if I end up having to tackle a real project, it might end up doubling the relative cost. You know, say something takes me two or three, it might end up taking five or six because the day before I depleted my energy reserves and then went past those. So again, does it have to be spoons? No, it, this could be anything you use. Uh, I wanted to talk about this because it's become so popular in circles, especially with invisible illness and with uh, disability advocacy and things like that. You see this all over the internet, uh, that it's actually got a name and it's well recognized. Uh, so I wanted to go over it for that reason, so that if somebody comes across it, they might understand what's going on. I hope I did a good job explaining that to you. This was just kind of an off-the-cuff video, just relating some of my experiences and hoping to broaden for other people uh, how they relate to others. I don't claim to speak for anybody except myself or be an expert on any of this. Uh, this is just something that, while I don't always use this analogy because I, I don't find that it's perfect, it's well recognized. And when I'm talking to other people, especially people who have 
uh, challenges with abilities of their own. This is an easy way to say, hey, I'm out of spoons today, or that's a high spoon activity for me, so let's plan it for a day where I know I'm going to do that specifically, whatever. Um, this is something that even doctors, uh, a lot of them will be familiar with this and will understand. So it gives me a way to relate to them in a way where even if the numbers are meaningless, we're standardizing on essentially a, a unit that's being expended. So that's that. I will probably pop this in my Living with Narcolepsy video, even though it's not just about narcolepsy, it's about chronic illness as a whole. If you guys have any comments on that, if you have any questions or anything, please feel free to leave them below. I am always, always checking for comments and try to respond to all of them that I can. And if there's any corrections or anything that need to be made, uh, don't be shy about putting those in there too. I'm just here trying to learn uh, like everybody else and get used to my own limitations and find ways to keep pushing forward. And this is just one tool in that box for me. So if you've made it this far, Thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. I really hope that you did learn something and maybe you can carry this with you as something to uh, relate your thoughts to in the future. I'd love to see you back here for another video. Wishing you all good health, good energy, and uh, the ability to do some of what's important to you today. Until next time, it's been a pleasure as always. Thank you.